Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for attending this first Birds of a Feather discussion on Sakai Model Course Exchange. I'm Wilma Hodges. I'll be facilitating this session and I'd really like it to be a conversation. I want to get people um, interacting and participating so that it's um, more of a, a discussion and we get to share ideas with one another. And um, when I was putting this together, I started thinking, you know, we're close to the holidays. A lot of you might have gone to, you know, cookie exchange parties. And so that's sort of the theme I'm going with, that our model course exchange is a little bit like a cookie exchange, but for courses. So I thought we could get together and share some best recipes for course design. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that a course can be well designed. It can be very attractive. It can have a lot of visual elements that are very nice. Um, it could have a really good navigation so that students are able to navigate through the site really well. Um, it could just be sort of exemplary in terms of other best practices. So, um, so what I'd like to do is encourage all of you to share some of the things that you have at your institution or maybe a course that you're teaching yourself and, um, and that way we can all kind of benefit. And I'm not above bribery, so um, I am willing to reward you guys for sharing. So anybody that actually does a little screen share demo, um, I'm, I will send you a cookie in the mail. So if you would like to share, you get a little sweet treat as a um, you know reward for sharing your expertise with others. So um, I'm going to invite all of you to um, you know volunteer if there's something that you would like to show and I will give you um, screen share permission so that you can take over and um, demo something for us. So it looks like Dee Dee is, has volunteered to show something. So I'm gonna turn over the presenter to Dee Dee. I'm pulling it up, hang on one second. Okay. I wasn't expecting to share, so, um, hmm, okay. If you want somebody else to go first, we can come back. Can I force someone else to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Julianne says she's happy to share. Julianne, can I put you on the spot? And then... Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, right. Julianne. Yeah, no problem. Let me just find you in the list here. Okay, you are a presenter, and then All we'll right. circle back to Dee Dee after. No oh boy. Uh, let me just make sure. I'm going to be sharing the right screen here. One second. All right, can you see something that looks something like uh, Sakai? Yep. yep. Awesome. Okay, so we call uh, Sakai Isidore at the University of Dayton. So apologies if I say Isidore a ton instead of Sakai. Um, but this is a student view of a course that I've been helping an instructor rebuild um, this past semester because she kind of came to me and she said she's getting tons of questions from students about navigation and where resources are located. And what she was doing was fine. It was based on a template that was developed, you know, <laughs> seven or eight years ago. And so it was just a bit matter of migrating her content into a newer format that hopefully would help minimize like students clicking around too much. So I've, I've got her syllabus here that I might go back to in a second, but I mainly wanted to show this main page where I have a nice banner that's kind of related to the course topic across the top. Um, I think that gives a nice little panache <laughs> to a course. I do this in almost all the courses I work on. And then um, this is a fully online asynchronous course. So I like to tell students right up front um, that each module is two weeks. Um, the first, there are two, two due dates throughout each module. She said that one problem she has is with due dates, like students um, oftentimes get, she misses due dates, putting due dates in all across um, different lessons pages. So she wanted to establish a consistent pattern. So we kind of say that these are the due dates. If you want to see the specifics of the due dates though, we have a um, Google doc version of her schedule and um, those dates are listed here then. And so the one thing I don't like about this is that students do have to kind of like do a double scroll. They have to scroll past the schedule here, but so far that hasn't been a problem. So I'm glad to see that that's not confusing students. But then we get down into the modules and I'm actually like probably too zoomed in at this point. <laughs> um, and so we have module one, module two, and it goes down the page. Um, this module's not released yet. Now it is like being weird with the spacing right now. I wonder if I like refresh because it shouldn't be this. Okay, that's better. There's, I was saying there's like a lot of white space. Sometimes when you zoom in and out, like you get more white space than you wanted. 
Um, if I go into module three, though, this was, it's not, there's not a ton in what we're doing with her course. It's more just about simplifying her course. So I could have gone all out and done all kinds of interactive things, but I mostly just want to take her content and just make it look a little bit more attractive and, um, and simplify it and make it consistent. So every module looks a lot like this, where we have an overview, we have the learning outcomes, um, we have the checklist over here that are split into first Sunday of the module, second Sunday of the module. And then what I really like, what I've done in this one is I've, um, we are Marianist University, and so we have a template built into our text editor that allows us to connect to Marianist principles. So this is something I try to do in all the courses I work in where I, um, read their content a little bit, and then I try to connect it to Marianist principles. And I'm not a Catholic, so I have to do some research, but I really enjoy doing that. And I think it makes the course a lot more unique to our school. And then a nice picture where students can um, explore more information about this graph. And so it's just nice and clean and organized. I have this kind of like best practices for team leaders over on the, uh, over on the side for every time there's a team project. So students can always refer back to that. Um, there's not much more to this, but I have, you know, clean, clear instructions that are spelled out very explicitly uh, with nice pictures for posting to the forums because she has students who are struggling with that. So there's not like, I don't have too much um, in innovation to show here. It's just more about showing something that's attractive. And she, so far, she says the students have had a really good experience with it and they haven't had nearly as many questions as they've had in the past. So I feel like it's been a success story. And I can show more or I can. Uh, stop talking as well. I don't want to take up too much time. Thank you. That, that's an awesome example. And I really like um, the way you've kind of consistently placed things. I know that's something that's really helpful for students when they're learning to navigate through a course is to have kind of that consistency from module to module. So um, the things that they learn in the first you know, week or two, they can apply later in the class because they kind of know where to expect. Um, the different types of content to show up. So I think that's a great example. And um, and I know that uh, your templates with the, the banners, I stole that a couple of times too for some of your CSS templates that you had up there. I put that in a few courses where it's like a picture banner because it does oh, have cool. a nice little, um, little you know, visual aspect to the page. Yeah, I did that on the syllabus too, because our course is mm -hmm. connected to, it, this one was an easy one. Sometimes with the math courses, it's harder harder to come up with a nice banner. Um, but when it's about books, I was like, oh, perfect. I can find all kinds of nice pictures to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you. So I'm going to switch over to Dee Dee. She was our next uh, volunteer. Yes, and I volunteered. There we go. Okay, so you should be presenter now. Okay, give me one second to just get this um, going and making sure that it's picking up the correct screen. And let me share. I know you'll probably see the, let me know what you can see because I'm in the same uh, browser. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Yep. Excellent. So this is one of the um, kind of templates that we were using for, uh, um, called post-pandemic pa practical pivoting when we went to, uh, when we all had COVID, well, we all had to work from home and uh, Stephanie Laurent designed this uh, along with John Corey from our team who put in the CSS that makes it so beautiful. Now I'm looking at it from the instructor's uh, point of view, but I wanted to show you what it also looks like from the um, student, uh, a student point of view. And as very, it's just visually so appealing that we got so much feedback that was lovely um, that I wanted to show it to you guys. So we put in a, a graphic banner that we made in Canva. We went down, here's the breakdown of understanding the technology and here's your flashcard. Um, and here you would go to your module. And there are several of them. And by changing the colors, adding questions, who to contact. So this is internal self-paced training for people to be able to get their classes online. So let's just pop over to module one and an idea of, you know, again, putting in that, but the resize, the image at the top that makes it just so pretty, um, adding the learning outcomes and then using H5P or Xerti, which would be work just as well, um, uh, to add content in the center that they can go through and what the purposes are and going on from there, laying out where you want additional resources and instructions again on what the next thing is to do. 
So looking at this, it's just a basic um, that we had some forms that, that gave them an idea of how to use some of Microsoft Forms. Um, because they because at the time we had just uh, you know gotten connected with uh, Microsoft Office, and I just wanted to show you what can be done uh, for internal training as well, and get some of your feedback. And I'll stop sharing, and you can give me some feedback. That's awesome. I hadn't seen that before. It's really pretty. I love what you guys did with the colors and the, the cards and everything. I just think it's great. You got a lot of kudos in the chat too. Oh, so. I did? Yay, yeah. thank you all. If anybody that else would like to one. give her kudos, please feel free to <laughs> turn on your mic. Thank you. All right, who is our next person who volunteered? Back up in the chat here. Uh, Christina, I think you were the next one to step up. So let me give you presenter if I can find you. There you are. All right, you should be presenter now, Christina. All right. I, I kind of feeling a little inferior after uh, the last two, but I'm going to share anyway. Uh, let's see. All right, are you guys able to see? Um, yes. All right. So I've got actually two courses I can show you. Um, we are a very small institution, so I serve as kind of instructional designer and LMS technical support. So most of the faculty will build their own content and just come to me for how can I do this or can you give me some ideas for doing this? I do not get as um, hands on in the development. So, so this will give you an example, I guess, of what instructors can do with almost a more minimalistic view with just what is straight out of the box in lessons. So we have, um, for consistency, I tell instructors, Sakai will let you have as many lessons pages on the left as you want, and you can name them whatever you want. And Christina will let you have two, up to two. The first one will always be course content, and if you want a second one, it will be named Start Here. And that's just so I can give the students some consistent instructions. Within course content, They'll just have the sub pages for each week, unit, module, chapter, however the instructor chooses to break down their course. This is a psychology course, um, just using a very basic template I've developed. Um, two columns with just an introduction, a checklist for students, and then links to the assignments, the readings, the notes, videos that the instructor created. So again, this, compared to uh, what Dee Dee and Julianne have, it's very minimalistic, but this is really what you can do just without CSS, without knowing HTML, without doing any image editing, just straight lessons and adding things. Thanks, Christina. That's a great example of just solid course design. Um, especially the start here page. I always recommend that to people because especially if people are new to online learning, um, if it's an online course, it's, you know, they, they don't really know what to do, where to go. So it's, it's super helpful to have that thing that in the course that's really obvious that it's the first thing they should go to, um, to kind of orient the students a little bit and give them that basic information on, on how to proceed. So I think that's a great thing to point out. And it's nice that you provide it for your folks. <laughs> I, I tell the online instructors to consider the Start Here page kind of like their first day of class introductory speech, where they would normally sit and explain how this is going to work. That mm -hmm. goes in Start Here. Yep. Absolutely. And then if I can keep one more minute, I'll show you another class that was designed by a different instructor, uh, Literature. Sherry does not have a Start Here page on the left. She has her um, Start Here information um, just as a link on the overview page. 
but within course content, she has hers divided by units. And she has another very, you know, minimalistic, but just very simple layout. Heading, the preparation, the readings and videos and guides for what they should be doing. The graded activities, optional resources, so. And she just uses the heading colors for this that are built into lessons. So again, just keeping it very minimalistic, but very simple for the students. Yeah, I like the use of color to group those different items, because then you kind of, you know that it's a different section and kind of signals mm -hmm. you. So and she great. keeps it consistent. The preparation is always blue, graded activities is the purple, the optional resources is red. Very nice. Thank you, Christina. Um, let's see, I think Corey Bauer said that she had something to share. Would you like me to make your presenter here? I gave you presenter whether you want it or not. If you don't want it, tell me and I'll take it back. Oh, okay. She said yes. Great. <laughs> We're not getting any audio from you, Corey. So I don't know if you need to rejoin your audio, maybe. I am seeing your screen, so that's good. We just, okay, I think she's redoing her microphone. All right, can you hear me? Yes, yes. All right. Is that? Okay, I'm new to the guys, so I'm impressed with what I can see. Um, I just have very small tool. It's a free tool called um, the Noun Project where you can put very simple icons in. So I'm working on a course to teach faculty how to how to build a course um, to speed up our process a little bit. Um, so I was explaining a, a Carnegie unit, and so I needed a little icon here and there um, that I just embedded. Um, I'm using other little symbols here, like when we're talking about the QN re um, review that we're doing. But the the Now Project is a free tool. You can download stuff. I mean, you can pay and get bigger stuff. Um, and because it's free and I give them credit, I always use the the uh, kind of a link to that specific one in my references. Um, and I had some other ones. Um, of course, I didn't do it. Um, and someone said about having due dates. So I kind of made things bold here because some students don't realize that when a forum, it's kind of a standard time. Um, so I kind of made it explicit in the, um, in the little section there. But I really do like the Noun Project. I use it as a teacher a lot. So um, you can search, there's a whole bunch of things. And then I just put them in my uh, resources there. And that's it. Great, that's a great tip. I know I'm always on the hunt for images or icons. So um, so that's a great way to get a whole collection of stuff that you can use for free. So there's a lot of great cre Creative Commons things out there um, that you can use with just an attribution. But uh, yeah, you've got one more to add to your toolbox. So thank you, Corey. Appreciate that. Um, let's see, who else? volunteered. I'm scrolling back up in the chat here. I think I saw Dave Eveland. Dave, would you like to share something? Sure, love to. See here. All right, you have presenter. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm a little bit slower on this, I apologize. Uh.
Dave, you want me to go on to someone else and then come back to you? Or did we lose Dave? Not seeing him. He might have gotten bumped off. So, um, is there anybody else that would like to share in the meantime? Martin, did you say you wanted to share uh, something? Jennifer did. Jennifer. Sorry about that. Okay, Dave, it looks like you got bumped off. Yes, I did. Okay, let me, are you ready to share or should I go yes. to someone else? No, I can, okay. I can go ahead and share. Okay, let me make you presenter. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. So this is a practical anthropology course, if you can see it. Um, and so we just have, um, um, we've got, uh, we are using some CSS here where we've uh, modified the CSS file and just made a default. Um, here you can see we basically have a course uh, where we've got unit summary and goals. Um, we've got some reading that's down here. Um, uh, we've got the checklist that over, it's over here on the right. We're using um, some of the column functions here for double width and showing the borders. Um, we've um, actually borrowed from Clear Creek Bible Baptist College um, by using some of the changes they've made to the uh, CSS for over here. So we've got this striped area that's back behind here that sort of looks that way. Um, we've got our video content here. So we try to call out what students are supposed to do. They're supposed to read, they're supposed to watch. Um, there's video content here. The video content we've offset to other pages so that we can designate those pages as video pages so they're easier to load um, for slow uh, connections. And we can also put conversations, not conversations, but other uh, components on those pages. If there's discussion about the video using some of the lessons components. And then right in there's the end of the unit. Um, we've got another course here that I can show you. Um, um, this is a poetry course that we recently launched. Um, all of our courses are seven weeks long. And so you've got the same sort of uh, overview here. You've got the checklist over here. Uh, we've got um, additional resources we put over here. Um, the students still have their overview and objectives, um, the directions for the week. Here you can see it's calling my name out because it's using that uh, braces uh, function inside of lessons to call students' attention to their own name uh, for what they're going to be doing this week. Um, here you can see each of the headers is done this way by way of the CSS um, that, we, that we have in place here, and then that's the end of the week. Um, and then some of these things will check off um, automatically and some of them won't, depending upon what students are doing so far as their involvement. So. Those are really nice. Um, I love the two thirds, one third layout that you have on those pages with the checklist over on the side. The checklist, if, if you guys haven't used it, uh, it's a great um, feature of lessons um, that allows you to kind of keep track of where you are in the course as you complete things. And as Dave mentioned, some of them will check off automatically, like when you submit a quiz, if you tie it to a required, required quiz, it'll check it off when the student submits, that sort of thing. So, um, so that's really cool. And I noticed um, a few of you mentioned um, that you like the striping on the side, the, the striped background. I don't know if you have any CSS you could share with us, Dave, um, but that would be cool if, if folks would like to see what that looks like, if you have a CSS file or something that you could upload to maybe the, the conference site um, where people can grab it. And let's see, Bonnie mentioned the, the first name thing. How, how cool is that? Yeah, that's a property you can turn on in lessons um, that lets you in the editor, you know, put like first name and then when the user views it, it inserts the user's name. So it'll say, Wilma, welcome, um, or whatever your name is. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a nice feature to personalize those pages. All right, so I think Jennifer had also uh, volunteered. So Jennifer, I'm gonna give you presenter. Right. Here we go. Oops, there we go. It's like trying to share, but it's not this out as a screen. There we go. Um let me I lost the big blue button. There we go. Share. Oh, 
let's try two. Can you see my screen now? Just want to make sure. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, this is, um, I teach an Excel class. So this is my um, development site, but it's all set up with our template. Um, so all of our online, we're working on in class, but our online classes all have this same format. So they have a course introduction, um, description, what are the objectives. Um, we do use um, Quality Matters. Um, so they all have course maps that show where all of the activities go with the objectives. Um, and then down here we have our pol some policies um, linked to the syllabus. I created a video about the syllabus um, just to walk students through it um, so they know where all the key points are in that. So all of our online classes have something very similar. An instructor might kind of rearrange that. And then we also have a template for our lessons pages. Um, this originally was a CSS developed by a company that we contracted with for a group of um, online courses. We were doing a rapid development and we liked it. So we've modified it um, so that we can use it as well. So all of our online courses are eight weeks. Um, there's a few that might be seven or 10, but they just add the squares. So each chapter or section um, has an overview. Um, it has a, their instructors are asked to put an introductory video in, which also helps with quality matters. Um, it lists all the learning objectives and then all your reading material and information for that week or module. There's an option for additional resources um, if an instructor chooses to do that. And then we link to all the tools um, here. So uh, tests and quizzes, uh, discussions, assignments. Um, also, there's a section where um, for this particular one, I have them go out to a video page that has their video content um, because I figure um, it's just a big page. It has an introduction, then it has the lesson, it has a tips video, and then it has the exercises they do that kind of go with that assignment as well. Um, so instructors have the option to kind of rearrange how they set this up. And then at the very bottom, um, we do use the checklist tool um, so they can go through. And we're on Sakai 21, and now you can link it to the assignment. So when you complete it, it checks it for you, which I think is a really cool feature. Um, and then to get some feedback, um, the questions here are through the um, add a question tool that is in lessons. Um, so each one of these sites has its own, um, if we go to settings, they have their own um, CSS sheet that we use um, for the whole site. So um, I'd like to start using the templates in Sakai that are delivered, but I think we're having some trouble because we have our own um, CSS set up already. So we're working on that. So that's what we got. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I love those picture tiles and, and some of the nice custom CSS that you have going on. It's really very attractive. Thank um, you. Yeah. And a lot of those good components too from Quality Matters to make sure that you have um, things that are going to make the course successful for students um, to help them tie it to course objectives and kind of navigate well. So excellent example. Thank you. Hey, Wilma, there are two related questions in the chat, one from Cindy and one from Bonnie. Okay. Um, so Cindy would like to know, is the left-hand navigation structured by the admin? Is that a custom um, toolbar that you guys have? On the left side that goes down the side? Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing custom is we have categorized it. Um, I don't know if they're talking about where it says course tools, communication yeah, tools. Yeah, I think she's talking about the tool. That menu. is custom. We Every mm -hmm. time we upgrade, we have to have them adjust that. Um, we've put that in to kind of group things a little better for the student. And let's see. Bonnie wants to know, did you have to turn on the ability to link che checklist items? Um, we didn't. Um, that actually, we discovered that when we were upgrading to 21. 
Um, the only thing is your assignment or whatever you're linking has to be active. It can't be in draft. We did figure that out. Um, right. But it should show up when you do the checklist. It'll have a little link icon and you can choose what it links to. Great. Thank you. And Does then I think else... Dave asked where the images are housed. They're housed in resources in a hidden images folder um, so that we can rearrange the images and stuff too in there. And Dave's also asking how it looks on mobile. Um, it looks okay. Um, I think on the larger mobile screens, it actually looks better. Awesome. All right. Any other questions for her? Thanks, you guys. All right. Thank you. You earned yourself a cookie. <laughs> um, would anybody else like to share? We've got about six minutes left. I thought Martin had volunteered. Martin, did you volunteer or did I? Okay, yeah, let me go ahead and give you a presenter. All right, you should have it now. Okay, hang on just a second. There's a little fumbling here while we do this, right? Yep, so we're seeing your screen. Okay, very good. So I thought I'd give quick two quick examples. Um, this one is from one of our LAMP consortium members, the Breathing Association. I thought it would be just sort of nice to show a, a different type of content. These folks actually had a, a um, week-long course that was done in person, teaching people how to become smoking cessation instructors. So if you wanna quit smoking, they're teaching the people to help you do that. Um, and so they had to take basically a, a week's worth of content and turn it into something that was online because of COVID. And so this is what we ended up with. This, a lot of this design work was done by Eric Green. Um, but if I go to the modules, um, which is what we've renamed the lessons tool here, you can sort of see that, you know, not unlike what we've seen before, lessons, objectives, and so forth, a lot of videos in line because they perceived that this was similar to um, what it was like to have the in-person experience. So there, there's, there's lots and lots of videos and then links to uh, PowerPoint slides, lecture notes, and then a quiz at the end and so forth. So this is sort of just what that looks like um, uh, for them. I just thought I'd show that. Um, and then the other one that I wanted to show was, hang on just a second here, this one from another one of our members. I, I like this clean look. Um, every course has this, has some kind of, you know, picture at the beginning of it, uh, some information about it. But if I go into a course, um, it, it always looks like this. There's a checklist here. There's a, um, a list of the lessons. And so if we pick one of these lessons and go into it, um, each one starts with a video. And then this is the thing I particularly wanted to point out. Uh, there are various types of what we call learning activities, and each one has an icon that identifies it. And these icons actually don't sit in the course. They actually sit in what we call the repository site. And so there's only one instance of this um, logo with the, or this icon with the, the pencil and the paper or this reading one, uh, this coffee cup one and so forth. So that if we should ever feel that uh, a logo needs to be updated, uh, we just update it in one place and it gets uh, updated everywhere that it's used. And so I, I think that's a nice clean look and it, it's, it helps with sort of wayfinding that there's always this visual indication of what are you doing here in this different section. That's it. I, you needed me to be short, right? Yep, that's perfect. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of chatter about your icons right before you talked about your icons. So okay. <laughs> you, well, you addressed that yeah. one very, that was a good segue into that. That's, um, that's, a, that's a, a, a downside of, of the sharing screens. Like I can't see what they're talking about. So. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so yeah. I'll quit sharing my screen. <laughs> and I think um, Julianne had mentioned they look kind of like the font awesome icons. That's another way to go um, as well. If you wanted to pop in an icon, you can choose from the font awesome library and the rich text editor and put them in. You can even change the size and color. So um, that's another quick tip for um, inserting a visual element onto your pages. Um, if you don't necessarily have an image that you're linking to, you're just calling the icon image. So. All right. Well, that is um, just about up for our time. Let me go ahead and put up my final thank you slide here to thank you guys for attending. 
and for sharing. And um, I, like I said, I'm gonna be rewarding those of you who, who shared, but even if you didn't have a chance to screen share, if you have any tips that you would like to share with other um, Sakai users or just you know good practices in general, not necessarily exclusive to Sakai, feel free to um, reply in the conversations area in the conference site. There's a thread for this um, discussion. So if you have any links that you want to put in there or you know a quick tip or a reminder, or maybe a, a link to a resource or um, you know an image of something, you can put those into the discussion or the conversation um, thread that um, is for this particular session and that way we can go back to it later and see what people posted so um, so i hope you will continue the conversation and um, thank you again for attending this session we've got about a 10 minute break before our next session which will be the lightning talks so that'll be a really uh, fun session we'll be going through a lot of different topics so um, hopefully i will see you again in about 10 minutes and um, I will, I'll see you then. All right.